We now take a dramatic climb over the hills past Megat Reservoir, holding some 64 million tonnes of water. This is Edinburgh's main water supply, which takes an estimated 18 hours to flow downhill to the city. Ettrick Forest has had recent additions of forestry, much as elsewhere in Scotland, and efforts are being made to reintroduce native hardwoods. But the forest of old was cleared centuries ago to make way for the sheep of the powerful border abbeys. The forest was granted to the Black Douglas after Bannockburn, and later annexed to the Crown in 1455. It became a royal forest, with the last royal to hunt here being Mary Queen of Scots, who was said to have been disappointed with the bag. Earlier Stuarts visited the area with a different quarry in mind, and King James V hanged the self-styled King of Thieves, Adam Scott of Tushelaw, from the branches of an old ash tree at the gate to his house. A popular destination for many travellers to this area is St Mary's Loch and the smaller Loch of the Lows. On the isthmus straddling them is the statue to James Hogg, the Ettrick Shepherd. He walked these hills with an ink bottle pinned to his lapel. He formed a literary society with fellow shepherds. Always a well-grounded individual, it said he turned down an invitation to the coronation of George IV as it clashed with a prior commitment at St Boswell's Fair. The ballads of the borders were collected and written down by Sir Walter Scott, much to the dismay of Hogg's mother, who accused Scott of breaking the spell by putting them to paper. Ballads served a critical role in the identity of the border folk, being passed down from generation to generation, with ghosts and fairies all playing an important role in these stories of the past. Indeed, Hogg's father-in-law, Willa Fop, was the last man known to have conversed with fairies. Located at the loch side a short distance on is the famous Tibby Shields Inn, formerly run by Isabella Shields, known as Tibby, who in 1824 was widowed and opened the inn as a means of supporting her six bairns, playing host to the likes of Sir Walter Scott, James Hogg and possibly Wordsworth, until her death at the age of 95 in 1878. Whilst still in the Shields family, the inn was later visited by many Victorian greats such as Gladstone, Robert Louis Stevenson and Thomas Carlyle. This wild mountain scenery is more like the Highlands and is steeped in history and myth. Merlin was said to have fled here after witnessing the slaughter at a battle near Carlisle. He lived his final years high in the hills, finally being stoned to death by local shepherds. King Arthur is said to have fought a great battle at Warrior's Rest near Yarrow Kirk, where an inscribed stone of great age tells of the grave of two princes, Nodus and Domnogenus, the sons of Liberalis. We pass the brooding remains of Dryhope Tower, seat of the Scots, whose family motto, Moonlight Fills the Bowl, tells of the lady of the house placing Scots spurs on a plate when the larder was emptied. The family prospered and in time became the powerful Dukes of Buccleuch. After a few miles we reached the Gordon Arms Hotel. This was also frequented by Walter Scott and James Hogg. A letter dated 1828 and the bar from Hogg certifies that the then landlord, John Gordon, was fit to hold a licence, whose name is in all probability still the one by which the hotel is known to this day.